the 17th lecture on church history. Chapter 3 The Recent Age The time period is from 1800 to today. 1. Introduction Number 1. The Spread of the Gospel The world has been scaled down due to the development of transportation. Every field has become a global field. The gospel has spread to the deepest inland regions and to the far-off islands. The prosperity of England states has facilitated the spreading of the gospel across the entire world. Number 2. Christianity's Social Activities In Europe, commoners became more powerful due to the French Revolution. Industries developed and the gap between capitalists and laborers grew wider. On the other hand, the church began evangelizing people of the lower classes. Various social organizations were established and they improved society. Number three, it was a time when science and philosophy greatly developed. A materialistic world view was formed during this time. Furthermore, how to harmonize religion with science was a question to be answered. It also newly affected the study of theology. Various philosophical ideologies formed during this time. Number four, there was a new theological flow. Key theologians are Schleiermacher, Ritchell, S. T. Coleridge, and Bushnell. Number two, new in philosophy and literature. At the time when the French Revolution happened, the church could control public sentiment. However, entering the 19th century, new movements happened in the world of philosophy and the world of literature. Number one, 
literary people. There were literary people like J. J. Rousseau, J. W. von Goethe, and J. C. von Schiller. Number two. Philosophers. Number one, Immanuel Kant. Kant was born in seventeen twenty four, and o four. He was born on April twenty second, seventeen twenty four. In Königsberg, Germany, he was educated in this region. In seventeen fifty five, he became an instructor at the University of Königsberg. In seventeen seventy. He became a professor. He spent his entire life in Königsberg, was celibate, and lived a regular lifestyle. We will take a look at his books. Critique of Pure Reason, seventeen eighty one. Critique of Practical Reason, seventeen eighty eight. Of the of Judgment, seventeen ninety. Prolegom Prolegomena, seventeen eighty three. Anthropology. Seventeen ninety eight. Let us look at his ideas. He pursued the freedom of meditation. He claimed that there must be knowledgeable criticism. A. Critique of pure reason. The book Critique of Pure Reason deals with epistemology and metaphysics. First, let us look at epistemology. In every cognition, are elements supplied from the outside, and out by reason. There is no objective existence of time and space. It is only our subjective cognition. Of their existence, our minds create the phenomenal world within this subjective form. Second is metaphysics. He said, "Man." Cannot know this with subjective knowledge and experience. Kant believed in agnosticism. B. Critique of practical reason. God is the fundamental premise of 
morality. He thought the God of Christianity is a being who makes man fulfill his moral obligation. He said, we cannot cognize Christianity's experience of spiritual mysticism or man's salvation. Number two, Johann Gottfried von Herder. Herder was born in 1774 and died in 1803. He was Kant's disciple who studied philosophy, literature, and theology. He was influenced by Rousseau. Let us look at his ideas. He emphasized emotion, individualism. He said, the Bible is a book written by man for man. We must apply human methods when reading the Bible. His major work is Ideas for the Philosophy of History of Humanity. Number 3. Schleiermacher Schleiermacher was born in 1768 and died in 1834. He was born in 1768 to a pastor of Breslau, Germany. He studied at the Barbie Seminary, but he quit before he finished. In 84, he went to the University of Halle and studied Kant. Later, he became a professor who taught at the University of Halle and the University of Berlin. Let us look at his theology. His theology was a theology of religious experience. A. On religion. Religion belongs to the territory of emotion. Religion is based on the feelings of man and it leads to a lifestyle of dependence on God. He counterposed religion to anthropology, giving more authoritative emotion than to objective revelation. B. The Nature of Religion He saw the nature of Christianity as being Christ-centered. Faith is rooted in the experience of relying on God. 
personal religious experience is more important than creed or the Bible. C. Christology He said, Christ is the or original form of humanity. He denied Jesus' divine nature. Here are his books. On Religion, 1799, Monologan, 100, and The Christian Faith, 1820. Number 4. Hegel Hegel was born in 1770 and died in 1831. He was born in Stuttgart. He studied at the University of Tübingen. He worked as instructor at the University of Jena. He also worked as a newspaper writer, and he even served as headmaster of a high school. In 1816, he became a professor at Heidelberg. He later became a professor at the University of Berlin. Let us take a look at Hegel's ideas. He logically developed idealism and believed in pantheism. He based his idea on Schelling's world view and tried to systematize it. He equated logic to metaphysics. He thought reason and the absolute being were identical. He proposed three elements of the dialectic process. They are thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. The word thesis here speaks of the abstract normal idea. Antithesis refers to an idea that is opposite to the former. Synthesis is a combination of the two, which generates a third idea. He said, existence lies where these three things are put together. His books include Phenomenology of Spirit, Introduction to the Philosophy of History, Philosophy of Religion, and Science of Logic. Number 5. David David Friedrich Strauss Strauss was born in 1811 
1908 and died in 1874. He studied at City Lingen and he was heavily influenced by Schleiermacher and Hegel. He issued the book The Life of Jesus, which shocked many people. Let us look at the content of the book. It says, Jesus is a historical figure, but his miracles are a myth. In terms of historical value, out of the four Gospels, only the Gospel of Matthew has any value while the Gospel of John has no value. Because Jesus' birth, resurrection, and ascension are in fact impossible, no historical value. Number six, F. C. Bauer. Bauer was born in 1792 and died in 1860. He came from Tübingen and he was influenced by Schleiermacher and Hegel. He criticized Christianity's history using the same methodology used by Strauss. Number 7. A. E. Biederman Biederman was born in 1819 and died in 18. 85. He was a professor in Zurich and a critic. He separated the principle of salvation and personal. He said the atonement, resurrection, and ascension must be seen as a fact that goes beyond time. The weakness of the Hegel school was that it departed from the historical truth and only focused on the idea Number three, the Church of England before the Oxford Movement. Number one, ideologies that dominated the Church of England. Ideologies that dominated the Church of England were from the Methodist Church, the Reformed Church, and the High Liberal Ideas of the French Revolution also dominated the Church of England. Number two, key figures of the time. Key figures of 
the time include Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Thomas Arnold, Waitley, Hampton, and Hawkins. These people freely criticized traditional doctrine and religion. Number one, uh, number four, the Oxford movement. One, the significance and beginnings of the Oxford movement. Third, move started in eighteen thirty three and lasted until eighteen forty one. It was called the Oxford Movement because it was a religious movement in which the University of Oxford played the leading role. We call this movement Tractarianism. Also, because of the election law of 1822 and the law of religious freedom of 1828, more people of the middle class were able to join parliament. For this reason, the Reformed Church grew more powerful. In of the High Church, in order to preserve its authority, initiated the Oxford Movement. The movement began on July 14, 1833, with John Keeble's sermon called National Apostasy. Number two, the purpose of the Oxford Movement. Number one, to rescue the church from religious stagnation. Number two, to develop a pure church. Number three, to have a moral rearmament. Number four, to keep doctrine and rules. Number five, to inherit tradition. Number three, key figures. Key figures include John Keeble, Richard Harrell Froud, and John Henry Newman. Number four, the results of the Oxford Movement. Number one, they stirred up piety in the Church of England. Number two, they improved the soundness of music art, and religious emotions. Number three, they honored church sacraments. 
conclusively, we can say that this movement was a return to Roman Catholicism. Many people who advocated the movement Roman Catholicism. This concludes the 17th lecture on church history. We have finished all the lectures on church history. I hope that you independently study and research more about church history. Thank you for all your hard work.